Now here's your host, Bill Teagan. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's Andy Sutton Show. Since we last spoke with you, the Cowboys with a big victory over Missouri to go 12-6 and six on the year. 2-1 of the Big A Conference. Coach, you guys continue to improve playing some of the best basketball of the year. Well, I think uh, over the last two weeks we have played uh, the best basketball uh, this year. Uh, this team's playing like I thought they would play earlier in the year. I think uh, the reason we are playing better, uh, Scott Pierce, Andre Owens, uh, those two guys have really stepped up their game, and Terry Collins continues to improve. And we're getting some other play off the bench from uh, Jason Scare and, uh, and even uh, Kevin Miles and uh, Ben Baum got in the game the other day. But that was a big win over Missouri. It was a tough defensive struggle. And uh, uh, in a game like that, uh, believe me, you've got to have a lot of courage on the part of uh, both teams. I thought uh, it was just a, a rugged game. But, uh, you know, if you're going to win this league, you better win them all at home. And uh, we're 2-0 and zero right now. But now we've got to go on the road this week. We're going to take a real close look at Missouri here in a moment, but you mentioned Andre Owens and how well he's been playing. You felt that coming into the season he was really going to be do a good job for you. It took him a little bit of uh, a time to get adjusted to major college basketball, but now he's starting to make the decisions that you've expected all along. Well, I think his decisions with the basketball are much better, and uh, he is scoring some points, and uh, he's really improved defensively. So uh, he is a very good point guard. I think he's third in the Big 8 right now in assists and his assist turnover ratio continues to get better. So uh, I think that uh, that's one of the reasons we are playing much better. And you mentioned Scott Pierce, and, and what a great job he's done over the last two games. Well, you know, Scott did a terrific job on Ryan Miner, the leading scorer in the Big 8 and uh, in our win over Oklahoma. And then uh, the other day against Missouri, he took Graham and uh, shut him out from the field. So. Uh, he also got uh, double-figure scoring, so Scott uh, is playing like uh, I thought he would play, you know. But he was out for four weeks, you know, at the beginning of the year he broke his finger, and then I think he came back and probably pressed a little bit, and uh, then he lost some confidence, but uh, he's playing uh, a very good basketball right now. And that ha helps the whole team out when a guy like Scott, who's a senior, comes in and really does the job. I would think that would help the morale of everybody. Well, the four seniors have really uh, played well. You know, uh, Reeves and Rutherford, you expected them to uh, play well. But uh, Terry Collins, uh, over the last, well, since Christmas break, uh, has really played uh, outstanding basketball. And uh, he uh, did a terrific job on Olini in the game uh, with uh, Missouri. Well, again, it was a great battle at gallagher Iva. I hope you were there. If you're not, we got some great highlights to show you. When we come back on the Eddie Sutton Show, it'll be the Missouri Tigers at gallagher Iva Arena. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. The Cowboys and the Missouri Tigers. Coach, we've already hit about how physical this game was, and any time these two teams get together, that's kind of the way it goes. Well, they've always been that way. Uh, Norm Stewart uh, does a terrific job with his ball club, and there you can see there was a lot of snow uh, last Sunday. And I thought uh, the crowd would really be uh, oh, uh, hurt by, by that. But we had, uh, you know, it's a sellout, but uh, I thought there'd be some no-shows with the game being on television. But it was, uh, it was a, I don't think it was rocking as loud as it was when we beat the Sooners, <laughs> but uh, the crowd certainly uh, played a, a good role in, uh, as, as far as the part of the six man. There's Andre getting the ball inside to Bryant, and you get the goaltending right there. Missouri, you know, came in uh, nationally ranked. I think they were 16th right. in the last week's poll, or 14th or 16th, but uh, they didn't drop too much after we beat them. I noticed they were still in the top 20. Well, Big 8, uh, you know, as far as what it looks like this early in the year, it would seem to me Kansas may be a little bit better than anyone else, but, boy, the rest of the teams are all pretty even. It's wide open, isn't it? <clears throat> well, here the Cowboys work the ball again inside the country. Well, Brian had a lot of free throw opportunities in this game. Well, both teams did. There were, I think there were 50, uh, what, 56 uh, whistles blown. <laughs> That's a lot of fouls. Well, but Randy really is playing well for you. You get the offensive board right there. Kevin Miles comes in, steps in, does a real nice job. Well, if we can get uh, some quality minutes out of Kevin and, and Ben, uh, I think that's going to help our ball club. You know, it's hard for Bryant to play uh, 40 minutes, and I think uh, when he uh, has to do that, I think uh, sometimes late in the ball game, uh, it has an adverse effect on his play. There's Randy again from outside. Randy finishes with 23 points. You know, we only put up 41 field goal attempts, and yet we scored 85 <laughs> points. Uh, th that's, uh, of course, you got, we got to the line, and then also we were uh, 5 out of 10 from three-point range. There's Alini. He, uh, we did a good job as far as limiting their three-point uh, 
shots. Uh, they were three out of 28, but uh, they really never got very many good looks at the basket. I think uh, Olini was one out of 13 from three-point mm -hmm. range, and that's one of the keys uh, in beating Missouri. I think you've got to take that three-point shot away from them. As a team, uh, three-point, they shot about 40% coming in. You're up by seven at the break. Uh, you feel pretty good at this point, I would think. Well, you know, you always uh, feel good if you're ahead at halftime, and uh, especially when you're, uh, you know, I thought we played real well. I thought this was uh, one of our uh, best games. The only thing that uh, if you're going to be critical of your ball club, maybe we foul too many times. And uh, the other thing, we gave up too many second opportunities on, uh, on offensive rebounds on the part of Missouri. Well, Andre was everywhere in that game. Well, he had eight assists, and uh, I think he had three steals. Good movement here by the Cowboys. That's what we call our secondary break, and <clears throat> we came down, we cross-screened, and uh, we were able to get the ball in to, to Bryant. Bryant led us with 28 points. He only shot 12 times, 8 out of 12, and but he, he hit uh, 12 uh, free throws. Randy had 23, Pierce had 11, so we had three guys in double figures, and the uh, other two starters both had eight, Collins and Owens. You know, Scare came off the bench, made a couple of really big baskets for you as well. Well, he made uh, a basket in each, uh, each half, and they came at a time when it looked like Missouri might have a little momentum. That's taking the ball strong to the basket. Uh, they were pressing us, and uh, we got in our press breaker and uh, broke Andre free and uh, created a two-on-one, and he took it all the way to the basket. There's Jason Skier coming off a screen, and he really curled in there. And uh, He certainly wasn't afraid to shoot it either when he got the ball, was he? No, he's a, he's a very, very good uh, basketball player, and he's going to get better and better. Great pass from Andre. You know, we talked about the physical aspect of this game, uh, but that's the way it's going to be in a lot of the Big 8 games because I think there's all the coaches uh, really stress defense, uh, whether it's man or zone, and they're just some, some outstanding coaches in our conference. You know, you talk about maybe you fouled too much, but in a game like this, that's really easy to get into, isn't it, when it's so physical? Well, you have to adjust the officiating. That's one thing we always tell our, our players, and if they're going to call it close, and you have to back off a little bit, but... Uh, there were just a lot of banging in, 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 on the part of both uh, ball clubs. Well, Pierce did a good job passing the basketball, too, in that game. Well, Scott has really uh, elevated his game. He's just playing uh, so much better than he did earlier in the year. I'm sure that's helped his confidence as well. We shot 58% as a team, and uh, they shot 32%. And uh, I think defense was the, the big key in this ball game. We kept going down low uh, to Brian after uh, the two Haley twins uh, had fouled out. Well, they had a much smaller ball club out there and late in the game where we were able to uh, isolate him down low. Country pretty pumped up <laughs> after that block. Yeah, he knocked that one clear over. <laughs> yeah, here it is again. Press row. He's done a great job of that this year, hasn't he? He's blocked a lot more shots this season. Well, he's he's uh, pretty active. You know, I think he's... Uh, been much more active here the last uh, couple of weeks, and that's another reason I think we're playing better. I think Brian's playing better. 85-70, you win that one, and uh, we're going to talk about what's ahead for the Cowboys, but at this stage, after what's happened to you guys over the last two weeks, it's got to be very encouraging because I would think the guys realize now what you're telling them, some of the new guys, is really paying off. Well, I think we're playing uh, with a lot of confidence right now. Uh, we'll see uh, how well we play because our next two conference games are, uh, are on the road at Colorado and at uh, Nebraska. And uh, if you're going to be in that first division or win the Big H, you've got to go on the road and win some. But I really think our ball club is playing with confidence. Uh, I think they uh, realize that uh, the things that we need to do in order to win, and, uh, and, uh, and, and especially the new players. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Andre is a good example, or Jason. They're both you know, new to the program, and I think they better understand what uh, the coaches, coaches are trying to teach. With 12 and 6 overall, 2 1 in the Big A conference as the Cowboys hit the road. And if you've watched any of the games lately, you probably noticed that guy sitting at the end of the bench for the Cowboys. Who is that? Well, that's Corey Williams, and Tom Dorado will have a conversation with him when we come back on the Eddie Sutton Show. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. You know, it's not often you hear about student athletes who come back to school once their basketball eligibility is over, but that is the case in Stillwater with Corey Williams, the former Cowboy star. Tom Dorado takes a look at Corey Williams. It's been two plus years since the jet from Macon, Georgia flew around Gallagher Iba Arena on a daily basis. Not before and not since have we seen that kind of quickness in an Oklahoma State uniform. 
By now you know he's landed once again in Stillwater, and hopefully he'll have the same impact. Well, Corey, welcome home, and first and foremost, you're back here to complete your education. Yeah, uh, one of the important things that I always said in coming to Oklahoma State is that I wanted to get my degree, and uh, it's just so happened that I had the opportunity now. Well, bring our fans up to date now on Corey Williams since you left campus after the 91-92 season. Well, uh, I went to the Chicago Bulls. I played there with the world champion Chicago Bulls, and then I uh, went to the CBA with Oklahoma City Cavs. Then I got picked up by the Minnesota Timberwolves. And this year I went to uh, Omaha Racers, got traded to Grand Rapid Mackers, and now I'm back to finish up on my education. Uh, it's a tremendous opportunity for me to come here and reestablish myself in the classroom, which is it's kind of difficult, but uh, I'm able to make the adjustment. I would think playing in Chicago how would have to be a dream come true for anybody who ever picked up a basketball. Yeah, uh, of course, anytime you get a chance to play with Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and B.J. Armstrong, and get a chance to play against Shaquille O'Neal, it's something that's meaningful in your life. And uh, I always looked at it as, hey, I'm getting a chance to play with the elite basketball players in the world, and I just want to go out here and perform. And oftentimes, when you give 110%, you can look yourself in the mirror and say, Hey, I gave it all I had. The life of a rookie can be less than glamorous at times. Of course. Uh, I think my job was every day at practice, when the balls were scattered out on the floor, I, was, I had to pick up all the balls with a smiling face, without getting upset, without, without making them upset. I learned the most important thing is that when you're doing something for those guys, smile, because if you don't, they make it even tougher for you. Can you remember the day you actually admitted to yourself that, hey, now basketball's over, Education is back on the front burner. I've got to go get that degree and get out and get on with my life. Well, I think as time moved on, that, that seemed to come back in my life. Uh, I knew all along how important it was that basketball wouldn't last forever. And uh, it's just some choices that you have to make. You can't go on waiting on people to call you. You can't go on uh, thinking that these things are going to happen. A man told me one thing, if you, if you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't stay still, you either go down or you go up, and I didn't want that to happen to myself. You're married since we talked to you last. Yes, uh, I have a beautiful wife, Nicole Williams. Uh, I've learned some things in dealing with her, a woman, as you know, uh, how to say yes and agree all the time. Very important so, how to say yes. So I've been doing that, and she's a, she's a very beautiful woman, and uh, it just so happened that the Lord allowed us to get together, and I knew right off the bat that this was the woman of my life. As a student assistant here at Oklahoma State, you can stay around the sport you love and help young people. Yeah, of, of course, you know, that's been like a dream of mine to continue uh, my activities in basketball. So now I'm able to touch these guys and allow them to understand what I've been through and what it takes to be a complete basketball player and hopefully to enlighten them in not making the same mistakes I made. Let's talk about some of those mistakes. Are you a little less tolerant now of those mistakes that you're on the other side of the uh, the uh, rope, so to speak, when you see those mistakes being made out on the court? Now I realize what <laughs> coaches go through. As a player, I didn't quite understand when I got yelled at, but as a, as a student assistant looking in, I see so many mistakes sometimes, and I be wanting to jump up and down and scream and, and turn my head and bite my teeth. But I guess it's a learning process for me because you know I never had opportunity just to critique players and watch them play and uh, for the guys to listen as well as they've been listening to me, it's been a plus for myself. Could you see yourself at times in Andre Owens? Yeah, of course, uh, because I was, a, I was a guy my first two years that used to kick the ball in the stand, dribbling 100 miles per hour. Uh, if your mother was out there, the ball might hit her and knock her <laughs> out. Uh, but thanks to Coach Sutton, he came in and, and made me realize what I needed to do as a basketball player. Could coaching someday be in the future for Corey Williams? You know, I, I really liked it. I would really like to coach, uh, simply for the fact I like to help people. And anytime you can help guys to improve on their skills and, and better themselves as a person and to help them on, long, on their life journey, I mean, you, you don't want to pass the opportunity up. So if it comes along, I'll be able to, I think I'll reach out and grab it. Everybody ought to have someone like Eddie Sutton to help them along that path, shouldn't they? Of course. Uh, he's been tremendous in my life and uh, never once have he let me fall into that rut where I forgot about my degree. He kept constantly uh, getting on my case that I need to come back sooner or later. And I just thank him for all the opportunities he's given me to become a complete basketball player, as well as to mature on this journey. Corey, welcome home. Good to have you back. Well, thanks, TD. It's good to be back. That's it from out here on campus, and we'll throw it back to Eddie on the set. 
we're happy he's back too and uh, he had a marvelous experience that one year with the Chicago Bulls can you imagine you know he's got a championship right. ring and uh, he'll have that the rest of his life and I'm not sure that uh, Corey uh, once he gets his degree won't be given an opportunity maybe to play uh, in Europe or possibly even go back up if that's what he wants to do but uh, he will get his degree uh, next summer and uh, I too think he would be an outstanding coach and he's certainly been a great help to us uh, over there because uh, as he mentioned uh, he lives over in a dorm with our guys and uh, he can relate to them because he really hadn't been away from the game that uh, that long so we're happy to have him back here and uh, you know he uh, is one of the outstanding guards I've ever coached uh, I've been very blessed at all the places I've coached uh, Bill and having great backcourt players but uh, Corey uh, was one of the best. And what a great people person he is. You can't meet Corey and not like him and obviously there's a lot to come for the Cowboys in the uh, week ahead when we come back on the Eddie Sutton Show we'll take a look at the Big 8 standings and also what's up for Oklahoma State. Welcome back to the Eddie Sutton Show. I'm Bill Teagans. Before we talk about what's ahead for the Cowboys coach a lot of people have mentioned a very positive and a, I thought a great article in the current Reader's Digest about the Oklahoma State Cowboys. Well, it's a very touching article. Uh, the young lady that wrote it, I think she really captured uh, Scott Carter, uh, who was a young man that uh, I think all of our fans know. Uh, we adopted him and he adopted us and uh, probably the most courageous little guy I've ever met. And uh, of course, he uh, passed away uh, uh, due to cancer. And uh, but if you read that article, I don't care whether you're a cowboy fan or not, it'll bring some tears to your eyes. But you know, uh, all of the guys just uh, really took uh, Scott in, and he took us in. And guys, we had some great times together. And uh, it talks about his relationship with uh, with our different players. But it's in the February issue of Reader's Digest. So if you haven't seen it, I would uh, recommend that you that you go out and and buy a copy of it because it really is a neat story. But uh, you know, I guess there's not anyone that has been touched uh, by somebody that has cancer, and hopefully one of these days uh, through cancer research we'll, we'll find a cure for it. But, you know, we, the, we have uh, something here in our state. In fact, nationally, the, the college basketball coaches, uh, what is it? Coaches Coach, for Cancer. Coaches think, for yeah. Cancer. And, uh, you know, anybody can participate in that by uh, just pledging uh, a certain amount of money on every uh, three-point shot that uh, the Cowboys hit, well then uh, that's uh, the way that uh, the money will be raised. That was started last year by Norm Stewart up in Missouri and I can't remember how much money they raised and of course uh, he sold it to the National Association Basketball Coach and I say sold it, he uh, convinced uh, that we ought to participate and I think there's probably 150, 200 schools uh, participate in that now. It's a great way and an easy way to help raise funds, obviously, for a great cause. As we talk basketball again, the Big 8, uh, it's amazing. And when we look at the standings, the Cowboys are 2-1. and one. Kansas State has already played six games. It's kind of a goofy year, isn't it? Well, I think one reason why uh, you have the imbalance as far as the number of games played, probably television has dictated that. And, of course, uh, everybody's going to end up playing 14, so uh, if you play them early, well, then you just won't play as many late. But I think we have uh, probably a really a big schedule in February. I can't remember how many games we play. I think it's 10 or 11 games, so uh, it'll be a, a busy month for us. But you can see, still too early in the year, but again, the Jayhawks uh, are a very, very good basketball team, one of the best in the country. And they've got a big game on Saturday with uh, Connecticut, uh, who is, I think, at the present time ranked second in in the nation. And then you think that their women's team is ranked number one. I don't think that's ever had uh, one school. I don't know whether that's ever happened uh, before or not, but uh, Connecticut women, they are ranked number one. And uh, I would assume if they were to beat Kansas and uh, Massachusetts would get beat, the team that is number one in the country, then they would probably move up. But there you can see uh, the schedule for uh, the upcoming week. Uh, and our game is at 8 o'clock on uh, Saturday. 8 o'clock uh, Central Time, 7 o'clock right. Mountain Time. And then on Big Monday, uh, Missouri plays. Colorado's at Kansas Tuesday. Uh, we go to Lincoln to play the Cornhuskers on Wednesday, and that's never an easy trip. And Iowa State uh, travels to Oklahoma. You know, as, as you look at that and we get ready for Colorado, anything surprise you a lot in the Big 8 right now? Anything stand out? You knew going in Kansas was going to be good, So, but, but anything happened so far? Well, I think some of the uh, teams that were probably picked in the uh, lower uh, half of the, the conference have played much better, and Colorado's one of them. Uh, Colorado's lost some games, but uh, they're very talented. I think this is the best Colorado team 
uh, that uh, we've seen since I came uh, back to Oklahoma State. And of course, they have one of the great uh, players in our league in Donnie Boyce. Uh, I think our fans remember last year what he, he mm. did to us down there. I think he had 46, which is probably as many points as anybody's ever scored on one of my ball clubs. So he's capable of going off on anyone. And uh, Colorado, is, it's not an easy place to play. But uh, we've had pretty good success up there. And uh, uh, I, as I said earlier in the show, I think our team is playing with a lot of confidence right now. It seems like Colorado maybe has a little more help for Donnie Boyce this year. I mean, he's, he's getting some uh, supporting cast members doing some things for him. Well, I think they're a lot deeper. Uh, they're a very big ball club, uh, which presents some problems. Uh, it means that Andre Owens is probably going to cover Goldgart, and he's 6'6", and uh, I think he's a smart, uh, the smallest uh, starter outside of Donnie Boyce. So uh, that's going to be a tough uh, assignment for Andre. What becomes the key thing for the Cowboys in, in, to play at Colorado? You know, it's, if, you, if you look at the floor there, they tell you how, how high up the elevation is, so they obviously want to use that as, as a deal. But what's the most important thing? Well, I, I think the most important thing is to go up there and play solid defense and uh, not turn the ball over and have good shot selection. Uh, there's no doubt that the altitude does affect you a little bit, so we're probably going to have to play uh, more people than we normally would if we were playing here at home. Okay, well, Coach, good luck to you. And, uh, again, it's Colorado coming up Saturday night. That's 8 o'clock Oklahoma time. Then on Wednesday, the Cowboys continue their road trip as they travel to Nebraska. For Coach Sutton, I'm Bill Tiggins. We'll see you next week, everybody, on the Eddie Sutton Show.